Okay. Uh, no real updates on any injuries. Uh, you know, like we talked about after the game and, and how we feel watching it on the tape, certainly frustrated. Felt like we had a real good opportunity uh, to come out of there with a win uh, versus a good team. Uh, and we, you know, didn't come through. So frustrated. Uh, and, and we're going to watch the tape with the players tomorrow, uh, pull it apart, see ways that we can get better. And that's got to be our focus. Uh, you know, our whole focus is, is on Pittsburgh. And, and we got a, now a long week going into this one, get some guys back, hopefully off of the COVID list, uh, and then put a plan together to go find a way to get a win uh, in Pittsburgh. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Kevin. Um, just, I'm sure you got have gone over the film with with your coaching staff. Um, in terms of the last drive, you guys have the ball at the 50. You've got three timeouts. Do you have any regrets about your play calls there? We felt pretty good about the calls, uh, Tom. You know, specifically, we had a you know potential for a, a, an explosive on first down. Had a screen on second down when the screen game had been good to us. Um, and then uh, third down, obviously, we, we turned the ball over. But, uh, you know, we're always considering uh, many different ways to go there. And, and, we, and you're right, we had those three timeouts. So we felt like we could uh, we were in control there. Um, but ultimately, when you don't come through, you second guess everything. I mean, you second guess the, the first play of the game, the second play of the game, whatever it is. When it doesn't work, uh, we're definitely second guessing ourselves. And you've said frustrated a couple of times. All things considered, Kevin, and the week you guys came off of and all you've – the hand that you've been dealt over the last couple of weeks, is there a sense of relief that you guys can still do what you want to do and that's get to the playoffs? Yeah, I think, you know, Tom, we have to control what we can control. I think it is really the biggest thing there, and, and that's right in front of us is this game, and that's what's the most important. Uh, so certainly frustrated uh, with how the last game went. But we're going to have – we, uh, coaches, players, staff, we have to put all of our energies into this game this week. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Fred Greetham, you're next. Hey, Coach. You know, as far as on the defensive side, obviously you were down and didn't get the pass rush you wanted. But shorthanded defense, you know, other – you know, they were dealt coming off the three interceptions. They, they gave you a chance to win, and they've been giving you a chance to win – you know, in the last several games, can you talk about the defensive play? Yeah, you know, holding that team to that amount of points, uh, again, in that building when, when they have, uh, you know, the ability to run their offense and, and, and the quarterback does a great job, as you know, uh, in their operation. So uh, I think limiting the points was, was a big deal. Obviously, I think we could have played better in the first half. Uh, we gave up a couple plays there um, in the red zone. I, I think that, you know, we can be better uh, as, as players, as coaches. You know, we can just do a better job in that first half. Uh, having said that, second half defense was really good. Um, and again, limiting the amount of points in that in that building, uh, I think, is a big deal. Thanks, Fred. Nate Ulrich, we'll go to you. Hey, Kevin, uh, what do you tell Baker about those four interceptions? I know it's case by case. But what have your conversations been like with him about them? Yeah, I think with any of our players, Nate, you got to learn from each one of these. And, and with the quarterbacks, it's no fun uh, to, to watch the interception reel and, and talk through them and learn from them. It's, it's not, uh, again, not fun because uh, you don't want to turn the ball over. But uh, we do have to learn from them uh, and because we, we got to take care of the ball. It's kind of – uh, it's important to how we win. Um, so we didn't do a great job there, uh, but we'll have to look at the tape together, watch it, and then make sure we get better moving forward. Do you think he was rusty not practicing for two weeks? And the other question I have about him is, where do you think his confidence is after a career high four picks? Yeah, I mean, I think Baker told you guys, uh, I'm sure the other night, uh, you know, he, he didn't play up to his standard. Um, and, and we expect uh, him to play at a high level. And I, I think confidence wise, you know, with the quarterback position, you get too much credit, you get too much blame. And that's just how it is. And, and he'll bounce back. And, and I think he'll be better for it. Thanks, Nate. Dan Lobby, we'll go to you. Hey, Kevin. Um, it, it seemed like you guys opened up your formations a little bit on Saturday, a lot, a lot more 11 personnel, three receiver sets, things like that. But was that just a game plan thing? What was the thinking behind that? Yeah, I think it was uh, certainly game plan 
uh, specific to who you're facing, the, the, the different looks you're getting uh, to certain personnel groupings. Uh, so it just felt like 11 w- was, uh, was what we wanted to be in that game. It could be moving forward, but we just got to make sure that we're, we're doing what we may think makes sense versus that particular defense. And then, you know, obviously Nick had a big game. So, you know, we talk about sometimes that formation in the passing game, but how do you think that kind of helped him sort of spreading things out a little bit in the run game? Yeah, we ran, you know, a very, uh, we ran essentially the same run scheme uh, quite a bit in that game and, and did it from uh, mostly opened up sets. Uh, and we we're able to get some pullers on the perimeter. And Nick did a nice job with his patience uh, with those runs. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Jake Trotter is next. Yeah, Kevin, you guys have you guys have won some close games this year, but but lost a lot uh, of close games as well. I think it's six games by uh, six or less points. You win one or two of those, and, and your situation is different. Do you see any connecting through line in, in some of those losses where you know you just need one final drive or you just need one final stop and haven't been able to consistently get that done? Yeah, I think that, that is frustrating, Jake. Obviously, this is the NFL. The games are going to be close, uh, and we got to find a way to come through. I have to find a way to come through for the team uh, when we're in those moments. And, uh, you know, that is r- really, again, the frustration uh, because, you know, you get into this part of the, the season, and, you know, I'm sure it's easy to say the woulda, coulda, shoulda uh, type of things. But for us, again, all of our focus has to just go right back into – this week, this game versus this opponent. The uh, second interception that Baker threw, uh, the footwork looked, seemed to be a little bit of a mess. Um, what, what did you see on that play with his footwork? And uh, when you compare it to last year, um, you know, has he regressed in any way with footwork or do you see it pretty much the same, uh, at least game to game? Yeah, I think he mentioned to you guys, he didn't have his feet set on that one. Uh you know, he, he has an opportunity to potentially climb and, and, and make a throw. I mean, as you all know, I mean, the pocket's going to be dirty in the NFL with some of these pass rushers. So it's not easy. Um, and, and I fully understand that. But there are definitely things we can clean up. Thanks, Jake. Mary Kay Cabot is next. Uh, yeah, Kevin, just wondering uh, if, if you think that that beat down that the Steelers got yesterday uh, at the hands of, you know, of the Chiefs, do you think that, informs where the Steelers are at this point or, or, you know, what do you think you're going to find when you venture into Heinz field on, on Monday night football? Yeah. Mary Kay division game, uh, an opponent that we know really well, uh, very, very well coached bunch of great players. So, so we, we know that it's going to be uh, a fight, uh, a 60 minute fight. We get that. Um, and that's what we expect. And also just real quick about, um, Donovan Peoples-Jones um, sort of versus the Anthony Schwartz stretching the field concept. Uh, do you think that maybe now that Anthony is back off the concussion, has got his feet wet a little bit, uh, can you use him a little bit more in that regard and maybe back Donovan off? Because it seems like Donovan has almost gotten to the point where uh, he's struggling in that role somewhat. Yeah, I think for sure with Anthony, uh, like you mentioned, coming off the concussion protocol, getting into these games, getting him some touches. Uh, I think his role uh, will grow as, as he becomes, you know, just playing more football. I uh, wasn't playing there for a little bit. Thank you, Mary Kay. Cam Justice will have our next question. Cam, we can't hear you. If you could go ahead and unmute your line. Can you hear me? Yes, we have you, Kim. Sorry about that. I wanted to go back to that final drive, Kevin. And obviously you're looking to manage the clock there with just a couple seconds left and expecting to move the change, not expecting that interception. But was there a consideration maybe to use one of those timeouts in order to get Nick Chubb a breather and get it back up there? Or was that just not in that in the plans for that drive right there? Yeah, Cam, we were definitely ready to use the timeouts when when necessary uh, or when we were going to stop that clock. Uh, you know, we were anticipating getting a new set of downs there. Uh, and, and then certainly you'd be ready to stop the clock in that situation. But, uh, you know, again, unfortunate how it turned out. Uh, and, and we got to look at everything. Just one more quick follow up. When the game's unfolding like that, what are those conversations about using those timeouts down the stretch? Where do those begin and how does that process look like in real time for you guys? 
Yeah, I think it's it's prior to that drive, understanding that you have all three and and you had the two minute there. So we had one play before the two minute felt confident that we could, uh, you know, run our core stuff. And, and then ultimately we're trying to go score a touchdown and, and, and or kick a short field goal. Uh, and, and we just didn't come through. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Jeff Shadell, go ahead. Hey, Kevin, I obviously Chase went on that COVID list just a day before the game. And do you feel that you have to bring in another kicker to compete with Chris um, for that job, not knowing whether you'll get uh, Chase back for the Pittsburgh game? Yeah, I'll leave all those type of roster decisions to AB. Appreciate you, Jeff. Tony Grossi, we'll have our next question. Um, not to belabor it, but the last uh, – after the game, you, and you just said it again, your thinking was to score a touchdown. Um, did you not have confidence in, in the kicker to kick a field goal? Yeah, I wouldn't characterize it as lack of confidence, Tony. I just think, to be fair to Chris uh, in that type of game, uh, didn't want to attempt a long field goal. Uh, with the game in the balance. We wanted to go score a touchdown, something that we had done uh, throughout that game, moving the ball. So uh, certainly if it came down to a field goal, he's our kicker. We have confidence in him. But our mentality wasn't to just get the ball to the 35 or the 40 and attempt a long field goal. And um, it seemed like your game plan from the very start was put a lot of responsibility and faith and trust in the quarterback, even though he had not practiced for two weeks at the uh, uh, had accuracy issues all year, especially his last three games. What merited all that confidence when I've never seen a quarterback arrive the day of the game after not practicing two weeks? I mean, what went into your thinking there? Yeah, just trying to put a game plan together, Tony, that could uh, score points. And all, all the things that we did in the past game uh, were things that we've done all season long. So felt confident in the work that our team, uh, the quarterback, the receivers, tight ends, et cetera, uh, had put in throughout the season. Um, and we felt like our run game was serving our pass game. Our pass game was serving our run game. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tony. Let's go to Scott Patrick. Hey, Kevin. On that third interception, the one to Jarvis on the left sideline in the end of the first half, um, what did you see there? What was supposed to happen? Yeah, a, a bit of a miscommunication, it seems. Uh, but uh, I think ultimately Baker uh, – probably feels like he should throw that ball away or move on in the progression, but a, a bit of a miscommunication. And when you talk about the play calling decisions right there with two minutes left, um, was a goal to use the last two minutes and, you know, cause I think it was coming out of the two minute warning there and the decision not to run the ball and try to not give the ball to Aaron Rodgers one more time before the end of the half. Yeah. I would tell you everything factors into those uh, decisions. Certainly uh, a great quarterback, like Aaron Rodgers, we don't want to give him any time. Um, so we felt like we were in control of the clock with with our timeouts. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Back to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin, with uh, the change that you've made on the offensive line, uh, you know, out of, you know, basically out of because you had to, you're forced to with Joel Antonio going to left tackle. Is that something that you would? Consider extending uh, if Jedrick Wills comes back. Uh, he has a long history at right tackle. Um, has Joel played well enough at left tackle to to make you guys consider that, or would you just kick him back into left guard and, and let Jedrick play his usual spot? Yeah, I think we'll obviously Nate talk through all of our lineup uh, change changes as guys come back. But if Jed's ready and healthy to go, he'll play left tackle for us. Okay, I know you're locked in on the Steelers. Um, but will we maybe even have your kids uh, rooting for the, the Chiefs and Rams over the weekend? They can do whatever they want to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Nate. We're gonna, Nate, we're going to take one more. Doug Lane Maurice. Um, Kevin, the, getting a second look at, at Baker's last pick, was there something that he could have done better on that play, or did he make the right read and the right throw and maybe if – Donovan doesn't get grabbed from behind. That's a completion in your mind. Yeah, you know, Doug, uh, each play that goes by, uh, every single one of our players 
Um, you know, they're going to want something back on, on any given play. I know it gets magnified when it's the last play of the game. Uh, it was unfortunate that, that the ball got intercepted there. I think, uh, you know, we certainly feel like there was potentially, uh, you know, a flag on that play, but we didn't get it. So we're not ever going to uh, hope for, uh, you know, a flag to, to help us in those situations. Just it didn't happen. And Kevin, again, you talked about the 11 personnel made sense in that matchup against the Green Bay defense. Were there aspects of that generally that that you liked in some of the things that maybe opened up? And then when you guys throw four interceptions in that situation, though, does that lead you at all? Well, maybe we need to pull back on that and use 13 personnel more. Yeah, not, not I, th I think it's all things that, that we'll talk about. I think so much of it, Doug, is who's available to you in that given week, players wise, uh, where where the health is at certain positions. And then it, it really is dependent on your opponent. How does your opponent respond to those personnel groupings? Uh, but certainly there were we did some good things. Uh, I don't want to discount that. There were certainly some good things uh, doing uh, going there, particularly with that run game. Uh, so those are all things that we got to consider uh, as we move forward.